Today I'm making a piece inspired by fall and the spooky season. For this painting, I'm using Kuretake's Kansai Tambi Sumi Color Set and their Sig Illustration Set number 2. Thank you so much Kuretake for sponsoring this video. I begin by sketching a bunch of ideas for an illustration with a mixture of spooky and witchy themes. I haven't drawn ghosts or witches in a while, but they have been recurring characters in my past works for many years. I ended up deciding on the ghost piece, just because I like the idea of a kind-hearted ghost becoming friends with some stray cats, and just living their best afterlife. Since the paints in the Sumi color set are nice, earthy tones, I think they will fit the mood of a theme like this very well. I start off with the Zig illustration set number 2's pens for the line art. I'm immediately drawn to the very fine mangaka pen. It makes a nice and thin line, so I'm using it for the ghost's outline, as well as the background sunflowers and some of the finer details in the cats and the objects in the foreground. For the thicker outlines, I'm using the Fudegogoshi pen. Lately, I've been more into thin lines in my works, and I tend to favor either pencils or a very thin pen or a brush pen over thick pens. I used to work a lot with thick brush pens in the past, so it's nice trying out a bit wider tool for the line art for a change. For a couple of the smaller details, like the stripes of the tabby cat in the front, I'll use the cool grey brush pen. The Sumi color set comes with six different tones. Red, yellow, green, blue, violet and brown. The combination of suit and pigments gives the paint a deep ink-like hue. All the colors in the pan look just plain black, but as soon as I mix them with water on my palette and make swatches on paper, the colors come to life. I'm excited to see how I'll be able to use these colors to my benefit in this painting. For the painting part, I am using Kuretake's water brushes. They are handy when you're on the go and don't have a jug of water available, since they have their own cartridge you can fill with water. Creating a full illustration with only six colors is pretty challenging. I'm afraid that not using a brighter tone of yellow for the sunflowers could make them look unrealistic somehow. But I'm hoping that in this context, where all the colors are more toned down, the flowers will also settle in.
The appearance of the ghost in this piece is inspired by the ghost characters that Tuve Jansson had in her moving books. She had the ability to make all her characters look a little bit cute, even when the character was a scary one. I ended up making a mistake earlier in the line art with the felt pen, when I didn't realize it wasn't waterproof, so it did end up bleeding a little bit when I started painting. I often get asked if I ever make mistakes, and of course mistakes happen to me as well. In this case, it's easy to hide since the color scheme that I had planned out was pretty dark already, so I can hide the areas where the ink bled with little effort. Next time though, I will use the felt pen after I am finished with the painting part. Now that I'm seeing the painting coming slowly together, I feel like the color tones work very well together. Even the sunflowers look fitting in this context. I find it useful to try all sorts of art supplies and experiment with unfamiliar palettes. That way, you can learn new things and not get stagnated in your accustomed way of creating art. For finishing touches, I am making some tiny details with white opaque liner. I'm using it for the whiskers and the fur of two of the cats in the front, and also a little outline for the ghost. Here's the finished piece. I'm really happy how it turned out. I hope you enjoyed the process, and thank you so much to Kuratake for collaborating with me.